This documentary features videos from the web as well as my personal analysis of the elements that encompass the brand of Cirque du Soleil. So let's start with the history. Mon nom est Brigitte Bélanger Warner, je suis l'attachée de presse du spectacle O du Cirque du Soleil à Las Vegas. Bienvenue au Cirque du Soleil. Guy La Liberté started as a street performer with the dream to take his group of jugglers, fire eaters, stilt walkers, and clowns on a world tour to have fun and entertain people. He had no idea that he was embarking on a journey that would revive the traditional circus and reinvent live entertainment, making him one of the most successful people in international business. Today, Cirque du Soleil has over nine shows playing worldwide, including O, which is permanently staged at the Bellagio in Las Vegas and takes place in and above a 1.5 million gallon water tank. Cirque du Soleil began really in 1984 when a troupe of circus performers and street performers came together for the 450th anniversary of Jacques Cartier's visit to the Americas. And then they quickly realized that if they wanted to perform all around the year, that they needed to go where there was a warmer climate because performing under a tent in Canada <laughs> could get pretty chilly in some winter months. So they decided to go to Los Angeles and in 1987, they were given the opportunity to do the opening show at the Los Angeles Arts Festival. Guy hit the road around the same time that businesses worldwide were moving toward globalization, taking regional businesses into international markets. With the Cold War over and trade barriers dropping all over the world for the first time in history, companies like Cirque found it much easier to penetrate new markets. There were still challenges, of course, as Guy found out when he first ventured into the U.S. market. Uh, if they would have failed in uh, Los Angeles, there was not enough money to put gas in the trucks to bring, you know, the equipment back home. Uh, fortunately, that did not happen. The show was ex extremely successful. It was a, a press and public success immediately. And uh, then quickly the uh, company evolved some more. We created new shows, new productions, and uh, we have many, many more projects to come. The history of Cirque du Soleil is no doubt really interesting. But what factors have influenced the expansion of Cirque du Soleil in the international market? What steps has Cirque taken to ensure that its presence in the international market not only grows, but also thrives beautifully? Let's have a look. Five major drivers of globalization have influenced Cirque du Soleil vastly. Political forces have driven the organization towards available markets. Recent advances in international laws has allowed the organization to further diversify and expand into markets unaccessible in the past. Market drivers have indicated growth for the organization. Africa, the Middle East, and Oceania have opened in recent years, allowing the franchise to grow and expand its presence through shows and the numerous community development activities the organization engages. Technological drivers have played an important role in Cirque du Soleil presentations, with global reach of availability through local industry, providing the technology for each of the unique production requirements each show is able to cover all of the countries that the organization operates within. 
Cirque du Soleil is a completely unique organization and performance company. There are very few like it in the world. Cirque du Soleil engages local circus organizations within each geographic region of its vast operations. Many would-be competitors also engages in community-based socioeconomic programs aimed at youth through a program developed by Cirque du Soleil called Cirque du Monde. The community activism, in a sense, gives Cirque du Soleil rites of passage in all of the countries it has operations. Cirque du Soleil is successful because of its diversity through performance art and diversity within the structure of the organization. The global citizen approach to the consumer within the ranks of employment and organizational behavior within the world community makes Cirque du Soleil a model company. Many factors attribute to the global success of the company. Ethical sourcing and the new citizenship clause command respect and ensue social responsibility of all of its employees and partners. Adopting best practices within the industry is a commitment to excellence shown by Cirque du Soleil. Each of the show's international success is attributed to the diversity each offers. While each show does not tie itself to one particular language or culture, and in fact many of the organization's shows are a combination and collaboration of several cultures. Each presentation or title tells a story through dance and performance art that needs no language explanation. Cirque du Soleil succeeds in bridging communication barriers and transcending cultural differences, which has attributed to its international success. Cirque du Soleil is setting a global standard of exceptional behavior as a corporate citizen. This is very important for the betterment of all humanity. Because of the organization's global reach, activities cross international borders, presenting some of the most difficult geopolitical human rights, labor, and complex socio-economic, ever-changing environmental issues known. Cirque du Soleil must adhere to these policies and be a socially responsible corporate citizen in every country that it operates. These challenges are no small undertaking. In around two decades, Cirque du Soleil has managed to perform in around 300 cities worldwide. But the question is, does this make it an international brand? For this, we will go over a few of the criteria that we have outlined, and we will conclude whether it is a global brand or not. To determine whether Cirque du Soleil is a global brand or not, I will be going over the six major criteria that I have outlined. CERG should follow all these criteria in order to be called a global brand. Criteria 1. Consistent brand elements. The brand elements should be meaningful, simple enough for customers to understand, easily memorable, adaptable to trends and changes in the marketplace, and transferable in terms of branding internationally and globally across countries and cultures. Cirque du Soleil fulfills all of them. The two major elements of Cirque du Soleil are its logo and its name. Cirque du Soleil is a French word which in English translates as the Circus of the Sun, hence the consistency with the logo. Rumors are that the troupe's founder, Guy Lalibarthi, designed the logo himself while lying on a beach in Hawaii. The key element to building a strong brand, however, is its color selection. And Cirque's advertisements have the logo in bright yellow, slightly goldenish tint. The goldenish yellow color represents sun, happiness, cheerfulness, fun, energy, youthfulness, and friendliness, all of which are a part of the Cirque's brand value. Criteria 2. High Brand Awareness A great brand awareness includes both high recognition and high recall. Recognition. For more than 25 years, Cirque du Soleil has amazed more than 100 million people worldwide. And close to 15 million people will see a Cirque du Soleil show in 2011 alone. 
According to a recent survey by Forbes.com, 57% of the U.S. population have attended at least one live Cirque show, and 85% have heard of Cirque and describe it as imaginative. Their marketing strategy with teaser trailers is such that it creates a great hype amongst the population of any country. Robin D. Bush mentions on BrandChannel.com, before the release of the show's Illuminati, that we have no doubt that semi-clad men and women in striking physical form will be a hit from Rio to Tokyo, and enough ink will be spilled covering the detailing topic to ensure that Cirque's brand awareness goes through the big top. Recall. When the logo is exposed to the customers, they're usually very well aware of the brand. Cirque du Soleil instantly comes to their mind. The recall is not just from the logo or the name of Cirque du Soleil, but it is also from the venue where the performances take place. The blue and yellow striped tents can be spotted even from a distance. Its mere existence not just aware the customers regarding its presence, but also stirs a sense of excitement amongst them. The emotion that Cirque strives to build heavily. Criteria 3. Consistent Brand Positioning Brand positioning is in fact the brand image or the collection of all associations that Cirque du Soleil can be related to. Cirque du Soleil is a complex and emotion-laden brand, one that touches the audience's hearts and imaginations. Some come to Cirque for an intensely personal experience, while others come for best in live entertainment. But for all, every Cirque show is an explosive sensory event that encourages the spectator to look within. Cirque du Soleil shows address human nature at its best, championing togetherness, acceptance, and physical strength and beauty. Creativity is also at the heart of organization's overall business plan. There is no room for compromise at Cirque du Soleil when it comes to artistic expression or to strong business development. A few of the word associations that customers think of when they hear the name Cirque du Soleil are creativity, circus, clowns, acrobats, colors, dance, story, show, dreams, magic, athletes, and togetherness. This is how the brand exists in the customer's mind, and it includes some of the words like dreams, creativity, magic, and togetherness that are already part of the Cirque's brand values. This is also where the concept of brand alignment comes in. To begin achieving brand alignment, the brand must be communicated internally in order for it to be accurately executed externally. Every member of the organization must understand the brand purpose and know how they are trying to achieve that purpose every day. It starts with the organization living the brand, followed by the employees crafting experiences, which in turn create the brand customers know. These experiences result in a positive impact on customers and they will continue to preach the brand's purpose to other potential customers as well. Cirque du Soleil's purpose is to invoke the imagination, provoke the senses, and evoke the emotions of the people around the world. It aims to accomplish its purpose through high-quality artistic entertainment experiences. The performers are also truly inspiring people who push their physical and artistic limits every time they perform the show. In the past 25 years, Cirque has positioned itself as a premium, creative, magical and emotional entertainment service, and the customers worldwide undeniably view it as such too. Criteria 4. Geographic Sales Balance In just around 25 years, Cirque has become a major live entertainment player in the world. The company's artists represent close to 50 nationalities and speak 25 different languages. Now, Cirque du Soleil is a multi-billion dollar enterprise with permanent shows in several cities, especially in Las Vegas and in Orlando. Its worldwide performances have given it great exposure in 300 cities across all the continents except Antarctica. Starting in Canada, it has moved all the way to US, Europe, Asia, Australia, South Africa and South America. Criteria 5. Focus on Category Cirque du Soleil's focus is solely on adult circuses without animals. It wants to provide top-class live entertainment for its viewers. All of its performances have a proper theme and a storyline that it follows and explores, leaving the imagination and interpretation of its acts to the viewers. There is boundless creativity, magic, and flexibility in all presentations worldwide, with each having a flavor of its own. 
Cirque du Soleil has achieved this focus and category for around two and a half decades, expanding its horizons, interacting with different cultures, and bringing more and more color, spice, and taste to its performances. Cirque du Soleil has aimed to leave its audience thoroughly excited, amazed, and spellbound, all at the same time. Criteria 6. Country of Origin Cirque du Soleil is internationally known and portrayed as a Canadian brand. The headquarters is in Montreal, Canada, and in celebration of their Canadian origin, they also offer their Canadian friends 25% off tickets to seven of their spectacular Las Vegas shows. They have also maintained the greatest partnership of ticket sales with the Quebec-born The Jordans Group, the largest association of credit unions in the whole of North America. We just saw that Cirque du Soleil maintains consistent brand elements worldwide, has extremely high awareness, consistent positioning, a well-distributed geographic sales balance, great focus on category, and a strong relationship with its country of origin. Therefore, Cirque du Soleil holds the prestigious status of being a global brand. From my side, I have concluded that Cirque du Soleil is, in fact, a global brand. But how does this organization translate the emotional experience of a Cirque performance into a multi-platform brand identity? To find out, have a look at the interview with Jean Goubert, the brand director of Cirque du Soleil. Cirque du Soleil is all about emotion, which comes across beautifully in your shows. How do you translate that into uh, a consistent brand message that works across platforms. Well, that's that's uh, that's a good, a very good question. You know, as I try to explain a bit today, um, emotions are a universal language. Uh, you know, it's it's it, it goes way beyond the cultures. It goes way beyond you know the um, advertising traditional codes. Uh, it's all about um, being you know staying true to what the essence of the show is. Uh, all the shows are very different. They all have a storyline, you know, that is bringing you into a very specific sphere, or, you know, or, or referring to something very specific. But what they have in common is the emotional connection that they try to to generate, basically, with people. So one of the rules that we apply, and which is a generic, very generic rule, is the uh, the fact that we give more questions than we give answers to people. Um, what it means is that you will never see a Cirque du Soleil ad that is over-promising a show. You will always see just some little hints that we give people and you know some teasers that will let them work their own imagination. Of course we orientate it the way we want it to be orientated, but then they make their, their, their own story. So really the, the consistency of this brand is not in the message, it's in the way we want people to generate their, their own message. Can you talk about what role content plays in the way that you present the brand online? Yeah, sure. Content, actually content is everything. Uh, you know, uh, there were some old debates in the company like a couple of years ago uh, on the relevancy of putting content online or, you know, keeping that as secret as possible and use it for PR, you know, maybe, you know, to keep it like for, for, for the medias. Uh, well, actually, I think that was really true and at that time they were right to do so. Uh, but you know the the modern era of, of of digital world is that you know the more you give content, the more you create occasions of people you know talking about your brand, and we have the chance to have an amazing content. We are sitting on a treasure. I mean, we have hours and hours of great content, and basically the more we show it, and the more we create reactions, and the more we create the the desire in people's you know really soul and body to live this thing alive. So you know. Uh, Actually, we do not believe at Cirque du Soleil that showing content is going to uh, uh, create resistance even to buy tickets, you know, because people would have seen the content. It's just a, a, a hint, once again, a teaser that, you know, makes people want to live the real experience alive than after. Lastly, Cirque is all about fantasy and magic and mystery, but social media is all about breaking down the distance between consumers and businesses and, and humanizing brands. Yeah. Are you afraid at all that um, engaging on these new platforms might demystify the Cirque brand, ruin the magic, so to speak? It's a super good question. Uh, you know, uh, we are, if I compare our reality just like compared to what it was two years ago, uh, 
uh, we didn't do any specific content, you know, for the web. We were just reusing existing material and putting it online, which was a beginning. Today, we are shooting more and more specific videos that are aimed at, you know, social networks and our CERT club, which is our own, uh, you know, social network in a way where we have this emotional connection with people. But the nature of this content is never to release who is behind the character or, you know, very rarely. We don't want to break the magic. You know, it's like if you were showing who was behind Mikey Mouse, you know, nobody wants to know. And basically, you know, we have some artists. The artists, they belong to a troupe and the troupe as a whole is a star. There is no individual star, the troupe is the star. So what we do in content is that we share more Cirque du Soleil, we tell stories, poetic stories, amazing stories, uh, artistic stories around the show, but what we avoid to do too much is just, you know, to go in, into the real life of these athletes or artists, because at what point, you know, it just sends the message that they are ordinary people. Of course they are, and you know, most of the time, surprisingly, they are, they are, surprisingly, they are more ordinary than we could expect. Uh, but that's not the kind of story, uh, of story we, uh, we put the emphasis on. Cirque du Soleil's high awareness, consistent brand elements, and consistent positioning has already given it the title of a global brand. They've even talked about the factors that has influenced its international expansion. Now, it's time to discuss the seven P's of the marketing mix that has made this entertainment brand into a multi-billion dollar organization. Product the main product Cirque du Soleil offers is a circus show. Their shows are filled with dancing, aerobatics, costumes, singing and acting. They come up with a new show once every few years and they will tour with that particular show. They have 22 major shows including Michael Jackson, The Immortal World, Iris, Zarkana, Allegria, Owo and Totem. Pricing the regular ticket prices of a Cirque du Soleil show range from a minimum of around 60 Canadian dollars to a maximum of about 150 Canadian dollars, O being the most expensive. Cirque has a premium pricing strategy, maintaining its image and quality worldwide. The prices, however, vary according to the country, the show, and the seating arrangements. Place Cirque is performed in around 300 cities across the globe, in all the continents except Antarctica. They are usually performed in all the well-known cities of the world, and their international tours usually begin with their first performance in their home city of Montreal, Canada. Promotion Most of Cirque du Soleil's promotion is done through its official website and the official YouTube channel, where they constantly update new trailers and information. They provide teaser trailers that invoke curiosity amongst the viewers as well as a hint of what to expect. The specific story is never revealed and is left on the interpretation of the viewers. Their media partners for each show or tour depend on the sponsor for that event. For example, Infinity in USA and Bradisco in Brazil have been their recent sponsors. People at the Montreal International headquarters alone, there are close to 2,000 employees. More than 100 types of occupations can be found at SAG. The company's artists represent close to 50 nationalities and speak 25 different languages. Such tremendous diversity at the very core of the company only heightens the acceptance and validation of the differences between individuals and communities. The employees value immense creativity and constant innovation and their physical strength and top quality performance is visible through all its shows. Process Apart from the few resident shows in Las Vegas, LA, 
Orlando, and Tokyo. Cirque du Soleil touring shows have their dates announced months, sometimes even a year in advance. Most of their shows are on a touring basis, which means that they visit country to country, performing in big top tents or in theaters that they have selected. Tickets are usually sold online, and viewers come to experience live entertainment in its purest and most creative forms imaginable. Physical Evidence The physical location where the shows are performed determine the quality of its service. For example, O, oh, the Cirque show in Bellagio, Las Vegas, is completely set in and on a basin that contains 1.5 million gallons of water, featuring water acts such as synchronized swimming as well as aerial and ground acts. Other touring shows such as Corteo, Guzo, Uwo, Totem, and Rurikai are performed under the big top the unique yellow and blue circus tents of Cirque du Soleil that are manually set up on a location of choice, such as an old port in Montreal, Canada. Cirque also features a few shows in arenas and theatres worldwide, including Eli Greer, Trillion, Michael Jackson, The Immortal World Tour, Kaidam, and Zakarna. Not all brands are perfect. Even Cirque du Soleil faces a few challenges, but the way it deals with them makes it even better and stronger, not just as a brand, but as an organization as a whole. In one sense, Cirque faces much greater challenges than most global companies. First, it must literally search the globe for specific talents. A good example of that is Mongolia. Uh, the little kids, I, as you know, in Canada, little kids start to play hockey when they're very little. In Mongolia, little kids learn to, uh, they learn contortion. So we know for sure that if we want to find great contortionists, we go to Mongolia. If we think about our Osho that is so unique because of the 1.5 million gallons of water on the stage, uh, we have to find um, people that are also, in some cases, uh, expert scuba divers. So a lot of those come from Hawaii for some reason. Not surprisingly, Cirque also looks to the Olympics to find talent. This can be a saving grace for events such as synchronized swimming and gymnastics that, unlike basketball and soccer, don't have professional leagues. It's interesting for the, uh, the athletes to be able to continue to do what they love to do and what they've trained all, all their life to do instead of going back and doing a regular job after their competition career is over. At the same time, Cirque Scouts take an ethical approach, realizing that in many cases, foreign governments have spent significant money and time training these athletes. We do not approach an athlete until we know for sure that this is their last Olympics and they're done with competition. Uh, it's an ethic that we really want to respect. In addition, depending on both an athlete's culture and their particular sporting event, they may have athletic ability, but not theatrical flair. It is absolutely important that they be open. Uh, one of the things that we ask them to do in auditions is we ask an athlete to, for example, climb a rope, and then once they're up there, we ask them to sing a song. And they're totally caught off guard by that, and the way that they will react and what they will do will tell us how open an individual is to really give a lot of what he has inside. Nobody wants to pay, you know, money to buy a ticket necessarily to go, you know, see a triple summer, somersault. You can see that on TV. They, they want to feel something. They want to be touched. Secondly, Cirque du Soleil faces greater challenges because most global companies don't have to worry about the welfare of their employees during non-work hours. For Cirque traveling shows, however, employee welfare is a 24-hour-a-day concern. That includes everything from the type of food they serve to dealing with language barriers, housing, and even homesickness. Our performers are really the reason why we're, we're all here, part of this company, and we need to take care of them, and Cirque du Soleil is really, really careful in making sure that the performers have everything that they need to be able to be happy and productive. Of course, Cirque du Soleil is not a life that is for everybody, and it is true that some performers have left because they were not happy being so far away from home. 
To help them feel more comfortable, Cirque does its best to create a family atmosphere. We really truly are a big family because for most of us, uh, you know, we work together, we are brought into this environment and Cirque du Soleil makes sure that, you know, we we bond together not only at work but we have parties we have trips that we can take all together we have once a month a a day of where we feature for example russian cuisine and the russian performers bring a dish from their country and they share that with the rest of the cast same thing that month after would be australia or france or wherever so that's one way that they get to share a little bit of their culture with with their teammates Although the performers are the stars of the show, there are many talented artists, designers, and technicians from around the world that work behind the curtains, coming up with solutions to Cirque's never-ending creative needs. Cirque du Soleil, of course, hires performers. We now have over 600 of them that come from all over the world. But we wouldn't be able to put on our shows without the support of wonderful technicians and support staff. For example, when we created O, uh, the conceptors wanted a piano that could be driven and that would sink through the water. And no is not a word at Cirque du Soleil, and impossible is not a word at Cirque du Soleil. So we have teams of research people who try to design and then fabricate models and then test those. And we ended up with a piano in stainless steel that could be driven with the pedals and that would end up sinking through the water at the end of the show. Although Cirque shows are pretty much self-contained units when they travel, they often make use of local talent when staging permanent shows like in Las Vegas and Orlando. We, we do find locally a lot of HR people, IT, um, marketing and PR of course, especially for example in Las Vegas we have a lot of really good technicians in Las Vegas as you can imagine with all the shows that are presented on the strip and in this city Cirque du Soleil also likes to give a chance to its employees to be transferred into different positions and different locations. Um, for example, I worked in Montreal at the headquarters for three and a half years and then was transferred to O in Las Vegas to be the publicist. The important thing for Cirque du Soleil is that when they have employees that they want to keep, they want them to be happy. So if that means transferring them elsewhere, if that's what makes them happy, they will definitely do their best to try and find them a position in a different market or on a different show. Of course, all of this talent doesn't come cheap. Cirque pays its people extremely well, and in many cases, much greater than they'd be able to earn in their home countries. The traveling shows have their own kitchen staffs, who develop relationships with local suppliers to assure the freshest, healthiest meals for Cirque performers. Cirque even proudly subjects their traveling kitchens to local health and cleanliness standards. In this way, Cirque performers not only serve the communities they visit, but they're a new market in those communities as well. It's all part of the international flavor of a Cirque show. One of the main venues in which Cirque gives back to the communities it touches is its Cirque du Monde program, which teaches circus skills to local youth challenged by poverty, drugs, and homelessness. From Colombia to Singapore to Amsterdam, Cirque has expanded the horizons of thousands of young people through its caring and generosity. It's a way of giving them confidence in themselves and finding a purpose and um, finding out that they can achieve something by working in a team, working together. And so one of the kids became part of Cirque du Soleil as well. One of the kids that was part of the Cirque du Monde was so talented and so generous that uh, he ended up being part of one of our shows. Guy La Liberté has not forgotten his own humble beginnings as a street performer. Guy La Liberté used to be at one point in his life living he was living in the street as well and and you know playing his accordion breathing fire for money and so we don't want to forget where we come from as a company and it's very important so this is why we give back to the community. Finally, let us conclude by taking two countries in question, Canada and Brazil and comparing how Cirque du Soleil performs differently in both these countries despite consistent positioning worldwide. To discuss about the difference between Cirque du Soleil in two specific societies of Canada and Brazil, I had an email exchange with Rafael Portugal, a McGill University MBA alumni 
and a specialist in marketing and branding. Having studied from ESPM in Brazil and from McGill in Canada, he has experienced Cirque du Soleil shows in both these countries. In his opinion, Cirque du Soleil, a global power brand, is more democratic in Canada because of the ticket's price and the longer period of time each show is played. Cirque's show is very new to Brazilians. They started playing there recently, this year being the fourth time, and each time Cirque did not stay that long. The way they found to commercialize the show in Brazil also makes it very special, exclusive entertainment event. The prime clients of Bradesco Bank and people who have American Express credit cards have priority to buy the tickets, along with sponsors of the show who are also given high privilege. The tickets are very expensive there. They are not affordable for Brazilian middle class. Tickets for Brazilians cost from a minimum of 140 reals to around 400 reals. In Canada, the current show costs from 60 Canadian dollars for a regular seat to 360 Canadian dollars for Tapis Rogue front row. And it is very well known that buying power of Canadians is much higher than of the Brazilians. In both Canada and Brazil, the Cirque is perceived as a special and magical show. Cirque sells the unique experience of being there watching very creative spectacles made by very talented people who also happen to have a very wonderful technique. Rafael believes that Cirque is impressive and fascinating to people from different countries and cultures, and it is this very inter-country and cultural exchange that has given birth to a new Cirque show, Ovo. It is the first show of Cirque that is directed by a woman, and guess what, she is Brazilian. Deborah Coca, a choreographer from Rio, brings her talent to all Cirque fans in the show Ovo, a Portuguese word which means egg. Rafael Portugal first heard about her and got to know about her talent in 2000 when he had the opportunity to create advertising material to promote her show Casa in Belo Horizonte, Brazil. To promote OVO, Deborah Kaka counts on the extraordinary works of two other Brazilians, Gringo Cartia in the scenario design and Berna Campus in the musical direction. Canadian critics welcomed Owo, which tells the love story of a ladybug and a mosquito in the insect's world full of life, movement and emotions. It brings the biodiversity and environmental issue to stage. The diversity is also present in the music with other popular Brazilian rhythms besides samba, including foro. Brings me to the end of my documentary. I hope you thoroughly enjoyed it and are excited to attend the next Cirque du Soleil show near you. Be ready to engulf yourself into the world full of magic and pure entertainment.